teased. If you guys enjoyed the intro or enjoy what you see here, go follow SM underscore battle underscore stories on Instagram or get some work done yourself. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, I'm going to be doing my WWE Super Showdown 2018 full show review and results. I'm going to be taking you through the entire card, running through each match, and telling you what exactly happened at the show. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so the show did open with a SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between The New Day and The Bar. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I am a human being, and I did go to bed at 2.30 a.m. So when I uh, set my alarm for 3.50 a.m., 10 minutes before the show started, I wake up, but then I was like, that is crap. And you know when you wake up early, and then you blink, and then you wake up, and it's an hour and a half later? Yeah, that's what happened, and I missed this match, and I hate myself for it. I need to go back and watch the match. I did not see the match, but I know that the New Day did pick up the victory over the bar. This is one of my favorite matches that I was looking forward to, so I am sad that I did not get to see it. But uh, I am going to go back and watch it and find out what happens. But the New Day did retain. Next was the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between my girl Becky Lynch and Charlotte. I hate I missed this meeting right here. Hopefully that it was better than their previous matchups. Um, again, another match that I wish I could have seen. Out of all of the terrible women's matches on this card, this one is the only one that wasn't really terrible when it was booked. So uh, I hate that I did miss this one as well, but Becky Lynch did retain. We have not had any title changes thus far in the show. Would we see that change? But, uh, let's find out. Next up, we have my boy John Cena returning to the ring for the first time since the greatest Royal Rumble, guys. And another matchup missed because I did miss a whole hour Hour of the show so I did miss this matchup as well I hate it but I did see where he wore that terrible t-shirt and they did pick up the victory Bobby Lashley and John Cena did pick up the win over Elias and KO you know they weren't gonna let my boy lose in his return match it just wasn't happening you know they're really high on Bobby Lashley and uh, it only makes sense here I, I doubt this was the greatest classic in the world but uh, hopefully they delivered I may go back and watch it later on but John Cena and Bobby Lashley do defeat Elias and KO next up we had a women's tag team match guys between Asuka and Naomi taking on the Iconics and they indeed did give the hometown heroes the victory here I did not expect that I expected them to bury the people from their hometown you know how they love to just destroy them in front of their families so uh, Asuka and Naomi did take the L here this is right when I woke up so I didn't really get to see the matchup um, but uh, the Iconics did pick up the victory. I was excited to see that. I think they deserved that victory, even though, you know, uh, not just because it's their hometown. I think it just calls for it because Asuka and Naomi, like, what are they? Uh, like, the Iconics, that's their thing. Um, it does suck for Asuka and Naomi, though, because I think both of these ladies deserve way, way, way better than this. But, you know, it is what it is. And the Iconics pick up the dub. Next up, we had the no disqualification WWE Championship match between AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. Joe, and this was my first matchup that I actually got to sit down and watch all the way through, and I was excited for this one, guys. I don't think this was better than either of their previous matchups. At SummerSlam and Hell in a Cell, I felt just felt more real. Maybe it was the crowd, or maybe it was just the general feel of the matchup. I felt like in those two matchups, you could literally feel the animosity in the in the you know in the arena. It just felt like a bigger deal, I guess. And uh, not to take away from this matchup, because it was a good match. It just, I don't know, I, I wasn't feeling it 100%. Maybe it's because I just woke up or something. But I felt like it was a lot of, like, there was a lot of sloppiness in this match. Uh, I feel like there was a couple botches. Uh, you know, the chair, they did not get the chair all the way. I thought the 450 on the, uh, Samoa Joe's leg looked a bit off. I Like, the camera angle, you couldn't really tell what uh, AJ was trying to do. So it kind of looked like he just missed the 450. So I thought that was upset. I don't know. And the crowd really didn't react to it. It was weird, but uh, I did enjoy this matchup. And I don't know where Samoa Joe goes from here, guys. He did come up short in this matchup against AJ Styles again. So uh, it's it's looking like um, AJ Styles will move forward with a different competitor. And I guess we're going to find out later on in this day who that will be. Is it going to be Daniel Bryan or The Miz? But I did enjoy this matchup. It just didn't quite live up to the expectation, I guess, that I was putting on it. But uh, Samoa Joe does fail once again, and AJ Styles is still your WWE Champion. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, we had a trash six-women tag match between Ronda Rousey and the Bella Twins, taking on the Riot Squad. And uh, this is pretty much just your every, every single week Monday Night Raw six-women tag match. I wish I could say it. 
something else about this match, guys, but uh, these six women tags just, I feel like I've seen them so many times in a row, and I've seen the Riot Squad take on the Bellas and another person, and just, it's just oversaturated. Like, I've seen it 162 million times, and I don't think I can take it again. Ronda Rousey and the Faces win. You knew it was going to happen. They're not going to have Ronda Rousey lose right now. And, of course, they love their Bella Twins. I thought we might have gotten a heel turn afterwards from Nikki Bella, you know, setting up the Ronda Rousey matchup at Evolution. That did not happen either, but uh, the Riot Squad does get defeated. And I hate this for uh, Ruby Riot. I'd like to see her go forward in a championship match with Ronda. I think, you know, that could actually bring some... I think that would be a worthy pay-per-view matchup to see. But uh, I guess we'll have to see what happens on Monday Night Raw. Next up, we have the Cruiserweight Championship match between my boy Cedric Alexander taking on Buddy Murphy, guys. And my Christ, this match was just as good as I imagined. I wish they had a little bit more time, and this match would have been definitely over the top. But I enjoyed every single second of this matchup. You know, they came out 90 to nothing. I really enjoyed all the spots we got in here. Uh, the lumbar check, my favorite finishing move in the WWE. My God, Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy, I knew they would deliver, and my God, did they. Buddy Murphy does take the Cruiserweight Championship from my boy Cedric, so no longer Cruiserweight Champion. You know, I think he was the longest reigning. I could be wrong. I don't know if it's Neville or Cedric, but I'm pretty sure he was close. I know he's held on to it for a long time, but the reign does come to an end there, and Buddy Murphy does capture the Cruiserweight title. I wish, like, can you imagine the pop had Cedric Alexander kicked out of that final finisher by Buddy Murphy? I just think if they had maybe six, seven, eight more minutes, I think this match could have easily, you know, uh, just been over the top, but uh, it was a great match and uh, definitely the most entertaining thus far into Super Showdown. Next up, guys, we did have the six-man tag team match between Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, and Dolph Ziggler taking on The Shield in Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and the big dog Roman Reigns. And this match pretty much went exactly how I thought. You know, we all had questions about Dean Ambrose and his loyalty to The Shield coming into this thing. Uh, there was a bit of a cliffhanger in this match. At one point, Roman Reigns did Superman punch Dean Ambrose, and it knocked him out for a while, accidentally, obviously. And then later on the match, uh, Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, and Braun Strowman would surround the, uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns in the middle of the ring, and Dean Ambrose would climb up on the fourth side of the ring, um, and they made it seem like he was going to jump, uh, you know, the shield, but then, of course, he didn't, and I think that... Uh, I don't think they're going to turn this man heel. After they acknowledged the heel turn and they made him say all those things on Monday Night Raw and all that stuff, I don't think they're going to do the heel turn anymore. The Shield do win this matchup, and I predicted that they would. I just didn't think that they would, uh, you know, give it to him here. So the Shield does pick up the win over Drew, Dolph, and Braun. You know, is Dolph going to end up turning face? You know, he's eaten so many pins. So the question remains now, is Dolph Ziggler going to be the one that gets kicked out of the little faction of Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman, or where they go from here. I guess we'll have to see on Monday Night Raw, but the Shield does win this six-man tag team matchup. Next, ladies and gentlemen, we had the number one contenders match for the WWE Championship between The Miz and Daniel Bryan. You know, this is their third matchup. You know, we had their first matchup at SummerSlam. We had their mixed tag team match at Hell in a Cell, and then we had this trash of a match here at Super Showdown. And yeah, guys, this match was barely anything. If you literally looked away from the TV, you would have missed the match. It literally was like two minutes of nothing, and then a roll-up by Daniel Bryan, and one, two, three, it's over. It kind of looked like a botch, but um, the crowd was completely stunned. Like, everybody was like, oh, oh, oh. I, yeah, it made no sense. It literally was over in three seconds, just like that, and Miz... I don't know where he goes from here. I thought this was a really ridiculous uh, little thing that happened in this matchup because now we have Crown Jewel, we have Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles, which will be a good match, but, you know, I don't know. It's just weird. It'll be a better match than Miz versus AJ, but I don't know. I think this doesn't do well for the storyline. I guess we'll get probably a triple threat or fatal four-way at the next pay-per-view. Not Crown Jewel, but the next pay-per-view, maybe we'll have a four-way for the title or something, but yeah, nothing to this match, and yeah, roll up one, two, three. And then we have our main event, guys, the last time ever, Undertaker taking on Triple H with Kane in his corner, and then, of course, the Heartbreak Kid in Triple H's corner, and I really didn't have very much, you know, very high expectations for this matchup, but I enjoyed it. I thought, you know, 
I thought it was better than Roman Reigns versus Undertaker at WrestleMania 33. I think that uh, I, I think it over delivered in my fa in my opinion. I think that you know it hit a lot harder than I expected. Of course, there were moments where it was slow. There was moments where you know it was a bit uh, you know chaotic and it was a bit unclean and sort of botchy at times. But uh, for the most part, I think they delivered. I enjoyed the match again. It had my attention the whole entire time. I thought the interaction between Kane and HBK and everybody in the match was awesome. The inclusion of the sledgehammer, the tables, the going through the crowd, everything. I thought it was amazing. And uh, Triple H does end up winning after a combined set of moves. You know, we had a sledgehammer to the face of Undertaker, a sweet chin music, another sweet chin music, a pedigree, and they put down the Undertaker for the one, two, three. After the matchup, all four men were in the ring, you know, celebrating, yada, yada, yada. Then Undertaker and Kane would attack HBK and Triple H, and they would put Shawn Michaels through the announce table leading to their matchup at Survivor Series. I think that they're going to book one more match, Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker at Survivor Series, and hopefully that'll retire the Undertaker or something, guys. Maybe both men will walk out after that. I think that would be, you know, nice. Maybe Shawn Michaels makes a stipulation that, you know, if he wins, then Undertaker must retire. I think that would be the best way to go here, but... Again, I thoroughly enjoyed this matchup. I thought it was good stuff. You know, not perfect by any means, but I still enjoyed it. But that pretty much does it for your Super Showdown review, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Um, pretty much this show was worthless. Besides the main event and the Cruiserweight Championship match, there was literally no reason to watch this. It was basically just a regular live event. But uh, I enjoyed, you know, the parts that I watched, I guess. You know, Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy was probably my favorite match. Then this one was a close second behind. But that does it for this review, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.